Hi everybody, it's Peter Schiff. It's Friday, April 1st, 2011. April Fool's Day. And there were quite a few fools uh, on Wall Street today in the media who were celebrating the fact that the U.S. economy created, I think it was 216,000 jobs in March, which was a little bit better than the 190 some odd thousand that they had anticipated. But what few people seem to understand is the jobs that we are creating are actually adding to the problem. We are creating a lot of goods consuming jobs uh, while we are not creating the goods producing jobs that the economy needs. And the reason that we continue to create the wrong kind of jobs is because the Federal Reserve is handing out free money. You see, because interest rates are so low, uh, individual Americans, and in particular the federal government, is able to spend all sorts of money that we don't really have. And these jobs that we're creating now are a function of spending borrowed and printed money. But the process of creating all this inflation to preserve this phony economy and non-productive jobs is causing severe damage uh, to the U.S. economy, which will ultimately uh, result in much higher rates of unemployment because once the Fed takes the punch bowl away, the jobs go with it. Because when they eventually raise interest rates, as they must, uh, they're going to have to raise them that much higher because they waited so long. So the longer they wait, the higher they go, and the more people are ultimately going to lose their jobs. And in the meantime, people suffer dramatically because of all the inflation. You know, when I was on Fast Money yesterday, and I was there to talk about why the silver price was rising, I said that silver prices were rising because the Federal Reserve is creating inflation. I mean, that's why all the prices are rising. And I said that the Federal Reserve needs to aggressively raise interest rates right now. And everybody was yelling at me because, oh, I'm, I don't, I'm heartless. I don't care about all the people who would be unemployed if the Fed were to raise rates like that. Well, sure, I care. I, I, I feel badly for people who are going to lose their jobs. But the problem is the longer we wait, the more people who are going to lose their jobs. The important thing is we need to transition Americans into more productive employment. And that will happen, but it can't happen until we have sound monetary policy. But in the meantime... If we refuse to do the right thing because we don't want the pain, all we do is exacerbate it. Yes, we delay it, but we make it worse. And ultimately, if the government decides never to raise rates aggressively because they're afraid of unemployment, then they're going to destroy the currency and far more people are going to suffer. M millions more will be unemployed, but even those that are employed are going to be broke. Because the inflation will wipe out the savings of just about every American. And the people on fast money don't understand that. You know, they, we need the government to do the right thing. But the guys on fast money haven't figured out what the right thing is. And so when I talk about it, all they can do is, is, uh, is try to uh, vilify me. When the reality is, I understand the problems and they don't. Now, the, the real thing that I wanted to talk about on this video blog is an interview I did today on my radio show at uh, the Peter Schiff Show. And if you're not listening to the Peter Schiff Show, I do it every day. It's live from uh, 10 a.m. to noon Eastern Time, and you can listen to it at SchiffRadio.com. And I did an interview this morning with a man by the name of Bernard Von Nothaus. And Bernard was just convicted of... Um, counterfeiting, two counts of counterfeiting and a count of fraud, and he faces 15 years, I believe, in prison. Now, what exactly did Bernard do uh, that resulted in a counterfeit uh, conviction? Because he didn't counterfeit anything. What did he do? He minted uh, medallions um, that were called Liberty Dollars, and these Liberty medallions uh, were tokens uh, they were each contained either an ounce of silver or an ounce of gold, pure gold, pure silver. And they were called Liberty Dollars. Now, they certainly didn't look like U.S. coins. They didn't look like a, 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 uh, a dollar that the U.S. would mint. Um, they didn't look like any coins that the U.S. government has ever minted. Also, they, had, they issued warehouse receipts, certificates, for people who wanted them to store their gold or silver, they had a paper IOU that was good for that uh, a gold or silver. And it was negotiable, meaning that if you transferred it to somebody else, they can come and pick up the gold. And the 
the intent, I suppose, was so that people could use uh, these gold or silver coins as an alternative to using uh, U.S. currency. They didn't appear to be U.S. currency. There wasn't there wasn't an intent to defraud anybody into thinking that Liberty dollars were U.S. dollars, were legal tender. The idea was that if people wanted to use them instead of using legal tender, if they wanted to use them as barter, then they could. Barter is not against the law. Neither is owning gold and silver. So if barter is legal and owning gold and silver is legal, then it's legal to barter your gold and silver. But the problem is the government doesn't want that. The government doesn't want people bartering in gold and silver. It wants people transacting in Federal Reserve notes. And so they uh, punished this man. They prosecuted him illegally for a crime that he did not commit. If, if they wanted to pass a law outlawing barter, fine. But that law doesn't exist. So they're prosecuting him for counterfeiting, but he didn't counterfeit. See, counterfeiting means that you're making something to deceive somebody, to make them think it's something that it's not. How would you counterfeit money? Well, back in the old days when we still had real money, when, let's say, when quarters were made of silver, the way you would counterfeit a quarter is you would make a coin that didn't contain a quarter of an ounce of silver. Maybe you would make the coin uh, out, of, um, out of a base metal. Maybe you'd make it out of nickel, and maybe you'd coat it with a little silver so that it looked like a legitimate quarter. And then if you passed it, if somebody gave you 25 cents worth of goods or services, and you gave them this phony quarter, and they took it because they thought it was a real quarter, they were ripped off because they didn't get all the silver that the quarter was supposed to uh, contain. Now, what about paper money? How, how would you, how, what, why was counterfeiting paper money? Well, up until uh, we went off the gold standard, up until I think, in, in let's say the 1960s, when we had legitimate Federal Reserve notes, if you had a $20 bill or 20 Federal Reserve notes, it said we'll pay to the bear on demand $20, and maybe that was 20 silver dollars. Now, if somebody counterfeited that and they made a note that looked exactly like that one that said Federal Reserve note, pay to the bear on demand $20, and somebody passed that in circulation, and then the holder of that counterfeit bill went to the Federal Reserve to get his $20 in silver, he wouldn't get it because it was a counterfeit note. So he was defrauded. Now, what about today? Well, if somebody were to make a counterfeit $20 bill and pass it, would the person who get it, would he be getting ripped off of anything? Well, no, there's no difference today between a counterfeit $20 bill and a legitimate $20 bill because none of them are backed by anything. You can't, you can't get anything from the Federal Reserve uh, with a $20 bill. The only difference is the legitimate $20 bill is counterfeited by the U.S. government and the other $20 bill is counterfeited by a private citizen. The real reason the government doesn't like counterfeiting is it doesn't want competition. He wants a monopoly on counterfeiting. I mean, think about um, our coins. You know, pull a quarter out of your pocket and then pull a penny or a, a dime, a, a, a nickel, or, or take a dime and a quarter. If you look at a dime and a quarter, you'll notice that there are ridges around the edges. But a nickel and a, a penny have no ridges. The reason for the ridges was that when quarters were made of silver, people might clip them. They might try to file some of the silver off the quarter. And then when they passed it, it wouldn't have the legally required amount of silver. So the idea was if somebody gave you a quarter, you would take a look at the ridges. And if they, were, they weren't there, you wouldn't accept it because you wouldn't, it wouldn't have enough silver to qualify as legal tender. Now, when the government stopped producing legitimate quarters, when they took all the silver out of them, why did they put ridges there? What was the point? Nobody would clip uh, a, a quarter made of copper. And in fact, when they made those quarters, they, they, they took nickel and they plated it around copper so it would kind of look like silver. I mean, why didn't they just make them at, at, you know, make them like the color of a penny? Why didn't they just make them, you know, copper? Because they wanted them to look like the quarters used to look when they contained silver. That's counterfeiting. All of U.S. coin and currency is basically counterfeit. The fact that it's produced by the U.S. government is counterfeit. Now, look at what Bernard did. Did he produce anything to look like anything? No. 
Everybody that, that purchased Liberty Dollars from his company, they knew they weren't buying legal tender. They knew they were getting um, just a, a, a medallion, a token, but they were getting real gold and silver. Now, to the extent that anybody took one of these um, Liberty Dollars and bartered it, the person who received the Liberty Dollar in exchange for whatever goods or services they provided, they knew that they weren't getting legal tender. They knew what they were getting. There's no fraud. There's no counterfeit. In fact, if somebody were to get, let's say, a, 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 a Liberty Dollar that had $10 written on it, if somebody were to receive that, and instead of a $10 bill, they were getting more value. The, the, metal, the, 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 the metal in that $10 Liberty, Liberty dollar was worth way more than 10 Federal Reserve notes. I mean, the whole idea about counterfeiting is you give somebody something that's worth less than the real thing, not something that's worth more. If somebody thought that they were getting $10 and instead they got a coin that was worth $20, well, how are they out? How, we're, how, they, they've gained in that transaction. And the bottom line is, the government had no evidence, they had no witnesses, that anything was counterfeited. Because, of course, nothing was counterfeited. The only reason that Bernard was prosecuted was because the government didn't like what he was doing. Not that what he was doing was illegal, but they didn't like it. And so they prosecuted him, they trumped up a phony charge, and they got a jury to rubber stamp it. Now, this is the same type of stuff that goes on in banana republics, other countries. We criticize human rights violations, political prisoners. We've got the same thing here. Now, it's true, other countries, if they don't like what you're doing, maybe they'll just kill you, right? We're not that bad yet. The U.S. government doesn't shoot people if they don't like what they're doing, but they will illegally prosecute you, and they will put you in jail. In fact, they actually labeled him a terrorist. Who's he terrorizing? Right? Uh, do we have to fear uh, his gold and silver uh, liberty dollars? Well, you know who fears him? You know who's terrorized by what he's doing? The government. The government is ter terrified because they don't want it happening. They don't want people using alternatives to the fiat currency that they're printing. They want people stuck. They don't want people to be able to preserve their wealth. They want people using the counterfeit currency that they are, that they are creating. The point is, I want everybody to go and listen to this uh, interview on shiftradio.com. It's the whole second hour. I've got him on the show. And it's important that we try to do something to maybe spread this around, send links to your friends to this episode of um, the Peter Schiff Show on shiftradio.com. It's important that we shine as much light on this as possible. We don't let this happen under the cover of darkness. This is something that we in America should be ashamed of, that honest businessman who is providing a product for which there was plenty of demand is in jail. The gold and silver harmed nobody. Nobody was defrauded. There is no counterfeiting. You know, in fact, they did have apparently one woman who had gotten one of these Liberty Dollars uh, 15 years ago and had held on to it. And now she came back and she was her only witness. And the fact of the matter is she doesn't even remember who gave it to her. Bernard didn't give it to her, and it's worth five times what it was worth when she first got it. She is much better off because she had this Liberty dollar, uh, but certainly Bernard didn't pass it. I mean, so how, what does that have to do with him? You know, it's like if my son, my eight-year-old son, took $10 out of his Monopoly set, and he went to a store, and he spent it, and the merchant was dumb enough to accept it, thought it was a real $10 bill, and, you know, is the government going to prosecute uh, Parker Brothers for, for counterfeiting because somebody used one of their mono the Monopoly bills as real money? Of course not. Well, Berner didn't use the coin. One of his customers used the coin. He didn't tell people, hey, try to pass these coins off. Try to pretend that they're actual legal tender. In fact, nobody would do that because if you use the coin, it was, it was worth more than what it was written on. So you'd be stupid. If, if, if you owed somebody $10, you'd be an idiot to give them 10 Liberty Dollars because the, the value of 10 Liberty Dollars is more than 10 Federal Reserve notes. So none of this was going on. Nobody was being hurt. This Nobody would possibly mistake a Liberty Dollar for U.S. currency. It was impossible. They don't look anything like each other. So this whole thing was trumped up. It was, it was a mockery of a sham. 
Uh, it was a phony a trial. He was convicted. And if he goes to jail, he will be a political prisoner. 